Welcome back to another episode of the Experts in Fire podcast. I'm your host, Mike Venard, and with me today is Randy Mowry. Today's episode is, What is a Fireplace Insert? Let's get into it. Hey, Randy, how you doing, brother? I'm doing great, Mike. How is your day? <laughs> it started? <laughs> no, it's going well, man. Here in the sunny, bright... No, I'm kidding. It's not a sunny, bright state right now. It's gray and hazy, um, but the temperatures are on their way up, and we're working our way closer to the summer solstice. Big, big deal for me. I'm a long day guy. I prefer long days, so super excited about that. Anyway, enough about us, Randy. We are here to talk about fireplace inserts. And uh, I, I know it's one of the things that when you hear fireplace insert, a million different things run through people's minds. Uh, I, spe- I mean, we get calls and people will say, well, I want an insert. You know, those of us who are in the industry, it pops a very specific thing into our minds. But in their minds, it's completely different. Uh, so, you know, trying to educate people on what a fireplace insert is, is and uh, a lot of the rules behind it we decided hey let's talk about it today so let's just start with the basics randy what is a fireplace insert yeah and i think that's a great i think that's a great question because like you said it is i think a bit confusing for folks when they when they're when they're shopping for you know for a fireplace so we'll start with wood and an insert is something that you want to think about the key word being insert uh, being inserted into a pre-existing fireplace. And Mike, that, that means a, quite a few different things across the board when you're talking about somebody that has a pre-existing fireplace. You know, so we probably want to start with, uh, I would say masonry. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's what most people think of is masonry style fireplace. So I think that's the best best place for us to go. How would I know? Like, maybe we should start there, Randy. How would I know what type of firebox I have? A good question. When we talk about masonry, masonry fireplace, one indicator is going to be it's full brick and mortar. And it is something that somebody's going to have to check possibly um, because they, they may not know. They may have just moved into the house and who knows what somebody's done with the, the face of it. It's not like, you know, my folks house that was built in the 60s and you walk in and right away you you know it is. It's full brick facade and the face of the unit. and You've got a brick chimney outside. So you know, masonry fireplace is going to be full brick and mortar, uh, like inside with fire brick. The chimney itself is going to be, you know, uh, brick built with a clay liner. Now, you know, that being said, Mike, you may get into some older houses, even like, you know, 30s, 40s, and 50s, that they may not have a clay liner, but it's uh, like a CMU block or what some folks call cinder block chimney. It may not have a clay liner, but that fireplace is, you know, masonry, brick and mortar with a liner in it. Or may not have a liner, but it is all some type of cinder block or brick and mortar going vertical up through the roof or even outside the house. That's another good indicator. You know, my last house, the entire brick and mortar chimney was built to the exterior of the house. You know, so you can tell, you know, bringing up another option in this masonry category is back in the day, a lot of houses also had a form of a heat elator. And what those were is the inside of the firebox didn't have fire brick it was this, it was fire brick floor but they had these big thick steel fire boxes inside of them but they had a masonry chimney so it was brick and mortar clay line chimney but what they did is they put intake vents we'll call it on your hearth so if you have a hearth that you can sit on maybe raise 12 you know 18 inches above the surface of the floor there was usually intake vents there and then above the firebox you had discharge vents and so what these things would do is some of them had fans and some of them didn't but they would draw air in the bottom discharge it out the top those are still masonry fireplaces places. So when we go back to talking about a wood insert, what we're getting into is basically a wood stove insert at this point. Sealed glass door, um, high heat, efficient, things like that. Masonry fireplaces like we just talked about, that's what these inserts are for. There again, that keyword being insert, where you're taking a wood stove insert and inserting it into this masonry fireplace, Mike. I've got to pause this here because we lean on our professionals out there and I want to make sure that we uh, call out to them. If you're just a homeowner, DIYer, 
I get it. I DIY a lot of different things, but I also stop and go, nope, need a pro here because I want it done right. Anytime you're starting to consider an insert or, you know, putting an insert into your existing firebox, I just installed a wood burning insert and I had a pro come out and they ran brushes down. They cleaned the chimney that I currently have. They ran a camera down it. They did what they are skilled at doing and trained to do. And then we had a conversation about, you know, my chimney and the firebox itself and everything that was going on with it. And and really for safety purposes, talked about lining my chimney, the works. If you're not sure, you know, if you're not sure, and, and Randy's going to talk about some other uh, types of fireboxes as well. If you're unsure, just call a pro. Um, they're out there. Man, they their numbers are everywhere, you know. I would say that they're not the best online all the time because these guys are going from rooftop to rooftop to rooftop. But check your uh, local paper. Check the penny pincher if you get that in your area. Um, they're constantly advertising in their local area just to let folks know, hey, I can come out. I can help you with that. That's one way to know for sure sure do i have a masonry firebox for an insert it was funny because these guys found out that i work for woodland direct and they're like oh you got your own insert don't you i'm like yeah i do but they have inserts available as well you know i'm not trying to say don't go with them they are good guys they are very good guys so it was fun conversation yeah and, and, and that's a and that's a great point because that kind of leads into you know with the insert itself we're talking the wood stove inserts you're you're gonna have to have your chimney cleaned um you, you know you want to inspect it and you want it needs to be cleaned before you put an insert in it uh, because the manufacturers of these inserts are going to require that masonry chimney to be relined with the proper size stainless steel liner for that insert so you are going to have to reline your chimney with a stainless steel liner so um you know as you said the the, the chimney suite professionals that are out there they can do the cleaning the inspection and then a lot of times they will also assist in at, at an install you know for that wood stove and for that liner itself you know so you, those are you know, like the safety part because you still have to get those things done before you put an insert into that fireplace and then kind of moving away st sticking with wood i want to stay with wood stove inserts uh, because outside of the masonry realm of fireplaces and i this is where there's a lot of confusion with folks when they are calling is they may have like a prefabricated folks we call them zero clearance fireplaces they're wood burning fireplaces they're not masonry they're prefabricated zero clearance meaning it is a metal box with like a fake fire brick inside of it and then the chimney itself is a metal flue chimney mike a couple things if you if the fireplace is in the middle of the house this metal flue will run up through the middle of the house and what's called a chimney chase out exiting the roof if it's on an external wall, you might see a fake hardy plank board, vinyl sided type of chase that runs the total vertical height of the house. And those are prefabricated fireplaces, Mike. So, you know, zero clearance, prefabricated, they, you know, many terms that are used. You're getting into a different kind of realm of, can I do that? Can I not do that? So now at this point, like we always talk about, you have to refer to the manual of that particular fireplace because those fireplaces, not all of them are going to be able to accept some type of insert and there's various reasons it's where the intake vents are discharge vents and that's why you want to refer to the manual and you can find manuals for those units online the biggest challenge i think for folks they don't know where to find their model numbers and i'll i'll touch on a couple places one place on a lot of these prefabricated zero clearance units is behind the curtain chain that you pull left or right on the vertical sides left or right side there's usually a metal placard that's riveted to the side and then it possibly if it's not there mike you have to kind of go up on inside the fireplace and there is a um there's like a deflector shield that kind of deflects up through you know in a prefabricated smoke shelf we'll call it up into a angled area that goes up into the chimney and sometimes they put them there uh, but you definitely want to find that model number that serial number get online find the manual and get the specs for it to see if you can even put in wood stove insert into one of these things because you still have to reline it with the proper chimney liner for that particular stove no matter what and same thing it needs to be cleaned and it is a from a safety standpoint it is um we want to really be safe with those because there's there's a lot of things that can go wrong if somebody does put an insert in and that unit is not designed for a high heat wood stove insert mike 
You have fire-related questions, and we have answers. You can email us your questions at podcast at woodlanddirect.com or give us a call at 586-221-3638. We would love to be able to answer them right here on the Experts in Fire podcast. That is the, so when people start to move in the direction of I want, really, I I encourage anyone who's listening, be ready for a no. If you have a zero clearance firebox, it's got metal, uh, it's a metal box, it's got uh, the black frame on top and bottom. Like you said, Randy, you slide the, you can slide the little uh, mesh screen in and out, but there's a lot of black metal to it. The way those boxes are designed is for airflow. And that's why they can be so close to combustibles. If you put an insert into that box and it's not qualified for said insert and you burn, especially wood, because it burns so much hotter than everything else, you're going to take away all of the safety features that were keeping your house safe. And remember, 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 there's one thing to say, I want a bookshelf over here or I want to hang a TV over there. We can have those types of conversations, but when we're talking talking about putting a wood burning insert into a hole in your home and you do it wrong you're putting fire into your house and that entire wall could turn into uh, a very bad situation in that point so always 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 have a pro come out clean and then always 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 know what you're dealing with if it's a if it's a metal box and you need to find the uh, owner's manual online and it says nope can't do it fight that thought because I know most people are going well I mean it doesn't make sense that I can't do it but you could do it over there I mean they're no they are specifically designed and tested uh, we go to these manufacturing facilities and they show us their testing and how, the testing they have to go through keep your families safe yeah it's all about safety whatever the application is it's it's all about safety and and that's you know that's what we're here for when you call us our tech team is they're they're skilled they're trained they're certified to assist and give you the proper information to make sure that hopefully what you would like to do we can assist you with it like you said mike sometimes there's going to be there may be a no you know we'll we'll tell you why and explain to you what you could do and then you can make a, a nice safe educated decision and go from there on that type of stuff and i i tell you what wood is a good place to start i'm glad you suggested that randy because just because of the heat that a wood burning insert puts out it's a great conversation to have uh as we walk through this so what's our what's our next step here next one you know going into gas and there's a couple things with uh, when we say gas inserts and a gas insert is a direct vent well there's actually there's a couple different options but we're going to start with direct vent there is a direct vent insert and direct vent means it's a sealed it's going to have a solid glass panel front it's a sealed system and same just like a wood you're going to have to reline the chimney with this collinear style uh, flue pipe same things are going to apply for the, um, the prefabricated that we just talked about meaning you have to check to make sure that you're not using the cover plate and covering up any kind of intake vents or exit vents and the unit is designed to be able to put an insert into it. For masonry, same thing. It, fireplace is going to have to be clean no matter what. It's still going to have to be, ins- you wanted to make sure it's inspected and cleaned because you still are putting a fireplace in that's going to generate some heat. And so you don't want to have to have any problems inside of your chimneys, chimney fires, things of that nature. So you want them clean. Um, but the direct vent uh, as a wood stove insert, it's a direct vent insert. So it's very specific because just like a wood stove insert, the direct vents they make both you know we can get into a whole different thing there they're designed to be inserted into a pre-existing fireplace whether that is masonry or prefabricated zero clearance and they're going to have the face plates just like a wood stove inserts going to on the other side of that there are few what they call ventless fireplace inserts meaning you don't have that solid glass panel front you're, you're not relining your chimney. It's an open flame. So that's another type of insert, you know, and, and I know I keep saying insert, but it is very, it's the key word because we're inserting into these pre-existing style of fireplaces, but they're available in gas. And where the direct fence or, you know, or the gas units come into play, Mike, typically as we see well, folks like my parents' age, you know, they're, they don't want to fool with war. They, they have a masonry fireplace. They're just, they just want to be able to hit a button or a remote control and turn some fire on. And 
that's you know where we see a lot of these direct vent um, inserts going in, in those types of applications. A lot of it has to do with aesthetics. It has to do with Instagram and Pinterest and you know TikTok people being able to sit and expand their i mean you think about it randy even 30 years ago it was a a completely different world you didn't have the exposure you know i so i saw a really cool picture a friend of mine sent over to me it was michael jordan hitting a shot and everybody is standing up in the stands it was like the big game winner you know the one he's famous for where he throws his arm afterwards he's in the air shooting and everybody's standing watching and then it was lebron james who just beat uh the record for number of points right and he's in the middle of his shot and everyone in the crowd is holding their cell phones up oh absolutely right they're capturing the moment, man. And it's it's a completely different world. Uh, and it's fun to think about at times to just go, wow, how how have things changed? So it education is a big part of what we do. And that's why, because people are sitting around, they see things, they hear things, they can go online and check things. We get phone calls from people who saw something that is really only available in Europe. And they're like, yeah, but I saw it online. <sighs> Bro, you're checking out European websites, you know, I can <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not even legal in the states. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but and and that's what we try to do, but education is a big part of it because there are rules, there are regulations, and those rules and regulations most of the time are in place to keep you safe. It's really just what your municipality feels is is best and safest and they have the experience as well in terms of house fires and and things of that nature you know i've got a buddy who's a fire chief and he told me the other day that no nope, i'm gonna give a bad stat i'm gonna find this stat from him again but randy it was astounding uh, it's something like a fire will double in a house fire every three seconds or something it's something crazy like that Um, So, see, I threw the stat out there anyway. But he was saying it's because of the stuff that we put in our homes nowadays. Once the fire starts to spread, the, the things that we've put in our homes, the furniture, the shelves, the, you know, all the neat stuff has caused them to have to respond even faster because it it goes up so much quicker. I bring that up only because you're putting fire in your home. Be safe. I'm not trying to create fear, but safety is a portion of man, I don't want the fearful thing to happen. Therefore, I'm going to do it the right way. Oh, absolutely. And yeah, and you're talking about a, like a gas direct vent or a ventless fireplace. You're, now we're running a gas line into this fireplace and then you have an electrical outlet someplace nearby that you're going to have to plug it in because of the, the blowers and the electricity that's required for the fireplace, things of that nature. You know, you're, you're modifying this old fireplace. You want to make sure that everything you're doing in creating and putting these inserts in is done correctly. Safety is always a huge thing for us. That's why we spend so much time and money on our our technical sales team, whether it's the sales guys, our our tech department, anybody that's related to picking up a call and helping a customer, they're all going through some type of training. You know, it's very, it's that important to us. 100%. So that's gas. Is there anything else you wanted to touch on gas, Randy? Um, on gas, no direct. You know the uh, direct vent insert, um, vent free inserts. There, you know, there again, the key points being insert into an existing fireplace, always with the prefabricated or some type of metal box fireplace. We want to kind of get down to the nitty and gritty of what it is exactly, what the model number is. Find out that information um, from you know from the from the clients to make sure that's going to be safe and go in. And, and then we move into uh, electric inserts. You know, electric fireplaces have come a long ways, a long ways. I have several in my own house, you know, but they do make electric inserts. You know, there again, you, you, you want to make sure everything's clean. You know, we're going to keep pressing that, get the chimney sweep out there and clean it, whether it's a prefabricated box, a masonry box, and get it clean. And uh, with the electric fireplaces, they're relatively simple. It's just matching up the size of your fireplace, sliding it in. You're going to have some type of cord that's going to plug in. A lot of the electric fireplaces, Mike, are going to typically have like a little 5,000 BTU style heater in it that dish 
charges right out the front of the fireplace. Um, same thing, you still want to check your prefabricated inserts just to make sure that they're designed for some type of insert. But with an electric fireplace, they're not generating this huge heat like a wood or a gas. Um, so relative, they're much safer option. We do a lot of the electric inserts in um, condos, older condos that may have had some type of wood burning fireplace in them because it's a condo, whether it's a high rise condo or you know whatever the case may be, but they can't modify it because it is a condo. They have an association that they have to work with and things like that. So we do a lot of these electric inserts there because they do want a nicer fire. They don't want to burn wood. They can't run gas, whatever the scenario is. So we do a lot of electrics in there because it is a, a nice, simple uh, unit that they can insert in and, and get some flame, get a little bit of heat to pull the chill out of their that particular space. Yeah, it's, it's funny. There's a squeeze in there. Um, you have an older generation who's tired of wood. But there, you do. You reach that that older generation's going. Ah, I don't want to burn wood and gas. You have to run the gas line. I'm not, some of them just aren't sold on the look of gas, but they're enamored with electric. They really think it's cool and all this stuff. And then you have a younger generation who all they know are iPads and iPhones and you know all of that techie stuff. And they go, I don't want fire. You know, why would I do that when I could put this in there and it's and it's cool. And man, there there are manufacturers out there who are coming out with some. Really really nice electric looking uh, designs. It, what I love about it, yeah, I, some of them I look at and go, eh, if I was going to do that, because they look so close to gas, some of them. I, I look at it in, you know, where I'm at in life and go, eh, I'd put gas in before I'd put that in. But I really love the other electric that I have that is, I can change all the colors to do. Yeah, it's just, it's so neat. Uh, and that's, I think that's what makes it the most fun is you have options, you know, and that's, again, for safety purposes, if you run out of options when it comes to, you can't use that wood insert and gas maybe is going to be too costly for you. The electric is an awesome option for the reason that you said, you can put a dedicated line, electric line and have your electrician run it for you. That puppy will crank out some heat for you. Oh yeah, you definitely, absolutely. Uh, I agree, hundred percent. Like I said, I have, I have a few in our place, and the heat. Well, if you ask my wife or one of the kids, they'll have that heat going all day long. But you know, I walk in, and I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, here, you guys got the furnace kicked up? Oh no, it's the electric fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and and. You can control it all from your phone. I had to say it, you know, I had to say it. I'm one of those guys. Yep, I am one of those guys. Well, Randy, thank you so much, dude. I, I think we've hit everything we can on the insert side uh, in, in helping define what an insert is going into an existing fireplace. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you've listened to the podcast and said, wait, you guys missed something, don't hesitate to reach out to us in the multiple ways that I know you hear as you listen to the podcast here and if you just want to say hi drop us a line we'd love to hear from you um we really appreciate all of our listeners out there from the diyer to the guy who's been doing it for a long time uh, we really do appreciate you and if there's anything we can do for you you just let us know randy as always thank you brother i really appreciate you being here with us today thank you no appreciate it everybody have a good afternoon see ya join us next time for all about fireplace accessories. We'll see you then.